Hi, wonderful people. Let's not get too distracted by the Tic Tac. Now, Josh and I really wanted to talk about the material science of aerogel vacuum balloon drones. But <laughs> if that is what I'd called the video, not many people have watched it. Calling it secret Tic Tac aerogel drone reveal got a lot of you watching it. But I think it's been a distraction because what really fascinates me is the mechanics, the material science and the physics of vacuum balloon systems and long loitering network surveillance. I do think a lot of the characteristics of these type of aerogel crafts fit the Tic Tac sighting, maybe not all of them. But I think we're being distracted by the very vehement lobby who wants the Tic Tac to be a UFO and don't actually want it to be a man-made craft. Well, that's not what we're talking about. What's really interesting and sinister and novel is long loitering network surveillance of humanity. And don't kid yourself that that doesn't exist. Back in 2012, a law was passed to allow the stratosphere, the upper part of our atmosphere, which still has atmosphere effectively, and can support lift, to be long loitering surveillance drone networks domain. The US, China, other countries in Europe are all working on these long loitering drone systems. And of course, one of the best would be a vacuum drone system built of uncrushable micropore ingress and egress of air resistant aerogel type material, which has been developed all over the world. They exist right now, both in this fantasy visualization of how a vacuum balloon might revolutionize transport or lighter than aircraft or even cities. Fantastic stuff. But aerospace contractors all over the world in their currencies are getting big bucks or whatever their currency is to build these systems to watch us. Why? Because they're cheaper than satellites, there's no launch cost, and they stay up in the air indefinitely and can be networked together. They can also be very secure because they communicate upwards to satellite assets, and then that can be encrypted to a single government downstation. And here's a new fascinating fact that you can put in your belt, and that is they don't have to be visual. Synthetic aperture radar from a spaced out network, imagine a mesh of these drones in the stratosphere using SAR, can build a really accurate picture of the Earth at night, through clouds, or at daytime. But they have a secret superpower. In fact, they have two, height and metal. Let's talk about height. Synthetic aperture radar is absolutely brilliant at pinpointing millimeter differences in heights of objects. For example, if you're looking at a enemy airfield with fighters, you can tell whether those fighters have been loaded with armaments under the wing hardpoints because the oleo struts, the landing gear, is a few millimeters lower due to the weight now that these aircraft are bombed up. That's a very good sign that something big is about to happen. The other thing that synthetic aperture radar can do, it can look at a battlefield and measure, literally measure every shell case that was fired and come up with numbers. And then later on, if that battlefield was driven over, you can see the height of crush and difference where those metal objects are. That's very important intel and it's not all military intelligence these networks can look at anything metal i was told by somebody who has to remain nameless that one of the big jobs of synthetic aperture radar is to measure car production in say south korea if you know the exact weight of a bumper for a new electric vehicle you can measure how many bumpers 
are coming off the production line. So you can get economic data from a country that would not normally release that information by synthetic aperture radar. Look, there's lots of things out there which are really interesting. I'm interested in the highly strange and in fact, I want to eliminate this. I want to eliminate the secret military by just looking at it, not exposing national secrets, but understanding it. And let's not get mixed up with military human tech and UAP, because the U needs to be I identified, leaving only the highly strange. And in my humble opinion, to really discover what the highly strange is doesn't come from disclosure from government or military because they want to hide the secrets. It comes from you, citizen journalist research, and it comes from the international community of independent scientists. Because of you, the truth can be out there.